this is Grok. It's like ChatGBT, but insanely fast. And this breakthrough might mean we're entering an entirely new era for large language models. We'll get to how it works in a moment, but to demonstrate why this speed or more technically low latency is important, let's listen to a call I made using AI with GPT 3.5 as the model. Hey there, I'm looking to purchase a pressure cooker. Do you have any in stock? Uh, I can check for you. Can you hold on a moment? Sure, take your time. While you're at it, do you also have any shrapnel or nails for sale? Um, I'll, I'll check that too. Just hang on. Great, thanks. And if you're wondering what I need them for, never you mind. Just focus on getting me the items. It gets the job done, but it feels unnatural. And this is due to the latency, the speed at which the AI agent can reply to the person on the call. But what if we try the same demo using Grog? Hey there. I'm calling to book a cleaning service for my pig, Goose. I was hoping to get her washed and looking her best. Do you offer any services like that? Uh, not for pigs, no. Oh, that's a shame. I understand that pigs are not typically considered pets. This low latency opens up entirely new possibilities for AI. More on that in a moment. So how did this breakthrough happen? Well, Grog, not to be confused with Elon Musk Grog <laughs> or Grimes' Grog toy, is the brainchild of Jonathan Ross. That's this guy. Jonathan entered the chip industry while working on ads at Google. Jonathan overheard a team complaining that they didn't have enough compute. So he asked for some budget from Google and started putting together a chip-based machine learning accelerator for them. Jonathan and his team would go on to build a new chip the Tensor Processing Unit. Within a year, this chip would be deployed to Google's data centers. But it was during this time that it became increasingly clear to Jonathan that a gap would emerge between companies that had next-gen AI compute and companies that didn't. So instead of investing all of his money in NVIDIA and waiting it out on a beach to cash out, he set out to build a chip that would be available to everyone and founded Grok. And what Grok did was build a chip specifically designed to run inference for large language models. This chip is a shocking 25 times faster and 20 times cheaper to run than ChatGPT for comparison. They call it the first language processing unit or LPU. And it's this LPU that runs its model rather than GPUs that are typically used to run AI models. The LPU is a beast when it comes to running inference. It can run AI models at shockingly fast speeds. It's important to remember that unlike OpenAI's ChatGPT, Grok isn't an AI model. Its powerful chip is designed for a specific purpose of running inference on large language models. You might be wondering what inference means. In the most simple terms, AI inference is the AI using what it has learned to fear things out or make decisions for you. During this inference phase, the AI doesn't learn any new information. It just applies the knowledge it's already acquired during its training phase to new data. So every time you hit send on a message to chat GPT, inference is being run over the model to get a response. And when using Grog, the time it takes to run this inference and get a response is almost instant. It's also far cheaper to run. And when using Grog, the time it takes to run this inference and get a response is almost instant. It's also far cheaper to run, which increases the margins for companies like Anthropic, which we know are already being squeezed on margin. And that opens up entirely new possibilities. You might have heard of Air Canada recently losing a case in a small claims court because their AI chatbot told someone that they could claim a bereavement fare after booking a flight. With the speed of Grok, it allows chatbot makers to run additional verification steps in the background. This means you could cross-check responses with the same model or different models before even responding with an answer. And this could potentially make the use of AI in the enterprise much safer and more accurate in its responses without making the user wait for the chatbot to process many steps. You can also create multiple reflection instructions for an AI agent. So instead of single shot responses, that means the AI immediately responds to your question. It can now ponder and refine the answer before you even see the response. The output is no slower than ChatGPT, but the answer can be much more refined when you get it. Now, you could obviously do all of this before, but it was too slow and too expensive to actually ship products like this in the real world. But with Grok's speed and affordability, it's now possible. If Grok eventually becomes multimodal, which I'm sure it will, 
we could witness AI agents that can command our devices to execute tasks become affordable and practical very soon. Using vision and the speed of Grok, a model could easily complete tasks on your computer at superhuman speeds. The Rabbit R1, which is known to suffer huge latency issues, or Meta's Ray-Ban AI glasses, might become much more useful thanks to near instant responses. Low latency and low cost cannot be underestimated. And what's crazy is this is as expensive and slow as Grok will ever be. If model makers can improve AI models' ability to follow instruction, and new and improved multimodal models can be executed lightning fast with Grok, we might be closer to truly impactful AI agents than we thought. Grok may even pose a huge threat to OpenAI. As models become more commoditized, speed, cost, and margins will become the biggest considerations. The chips of the future for both inference and training, as we've seen from NVIDIA's success, may just be the biggest winners. Grok is truly impressive. I encourage you to try it out for yourself. And if you want to try multiple reflection or thinking steps with AI, you can build your own AI agents and experiment with Grok on simtheory.ai. A link to both of these are in the description, and I'll also leave links to the agents I used in this video as well. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, liking, and telling me your thoughts about Grok in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Wait, what? That sounds pretty sinister. I understand, but I really need these items. Can you help me out with that? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look for you now. Thanks, I appreciate it. Let me know what you find.